Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellos, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have questions and answers about coronavirus, so let's get started. This video is not an update. I have two updates on my channel and I might do another update in the future, but today is just questions and answers. So let's jump into it. What are the phases of a pandemic? The World Health Organization has these phases for a pandemic. Phase one and two are called interpandemic phase. This is phases for animal transmission, very few human transmission. And then starting from three, this is called pandemic alert period. Human to human transmission start to appear and to increase. But then five and six are the widespread human to human transmission. And this is the peak. After that, you have the post-peak period or PPP. And after that, you have the post-pandemic period, also PPP, but two different things. And after that, you reach the inter-pandemic phase and getting ready for another pandemic. What are the phases of an infection? So let's say that I were to develop an infection. So we start here. Point of infection. You sneezed in my face. So I developed an infection. Great. Not so great. But then you have the incubation period. What is the definition of the incubation period? It's the phase between the infection. So now the virus or the bacteria or whatever has entered my body, but I'm not showing symptoms yet. I will start showing symptoms here in the prodromal phase. So it's the period between the infection and the appearance of symptoms. Speaking of symptoms, I will start with the prodromal phase and these symptoms are very vague and general. So I know that there is something wrong with me, but I cannot express myself. I cannot put my finger on the actual problem. And then the invasive phase, baby, this is the problem. This is the illness, most severe signs and symptoms in the entire disease or illness. And if you're talking about COVID-19, expect cough. If it is severe, I might get shorts of breath and fever. Some people might experience upper respiratory symptoms such as sneezing, runny nose or sore throat. And then after that, the decline phase, I'm declining. And then after that, the convalescence phase. Okay, great. And this is the peak or the apex or the zenith, not to be confused with the watchmaker company. I forgot to mention something serious on this graph, but no one reminded me. What's the problem? Remember that before we start talking about any graph, you have to ask yourself what's on the X axis and what's on the Y axis. On the horizontal axis, this is time. Makes perfect sense. On the vertical axis, two things are correct. Number one, it could be the severity of the symptoms because the peak is here. This is also correlating with the number of infectious agents, the number of viral particles in my body. And let's say that just one viral particle entered my body. Just one by itself is not going to do anything. Probably not. But then the viral will start to replicate using my own cell nucleus as a DNA slash RNA making machine. And then the viral particles will start to increase. And then when they increase, they usually correlate with the severities. So the peak could be the severity, the maximum severity of the symptoms or the maximum number of viral particles in my body. After the end of infections, what's going to happen? Usually nothing, but sometimes you have sequelae or complications. How long is the incubation period for this disease? According to the WHO, between 1 to 14 days, most people will experience 5 days of incubation period, which is between point of infection and symptoms. Can you shed the virus and transmit it to other people during this period? Yes, it's possible. Fourth, when will the PCR test be positive? We can look at this graph. So before the point of infection, of course, the test will come back negative. This is the PCR test. And of course, after you recover, it's gonna come back negative. But then everything in between, it's probably gonna come back positive, assuming the test is 100% accurate. What is the difference between sensitivity and specificity? If you have a highly sensitive test, the rate of false negative is low. If you have a highly specific test, the rate of false positive is low. So if you'd like the test to have a false positive rate that's low, choose the test that's highly specific. Don't forget that viruses are either DNA viruses or RNA viruses. Coronavirus is here. RNA, orthomyxoviruses here, which include the influenza, also RNA. 
And retrovirus is also here, and this is HIV, also RNA. So the theory is, if we can use drugs that are used to treat HIV or influenza, maybe we can try them for corona, maybe they will work. So what are the medications used for HIV and can we use them for the corona? So these are the medications used for HIV. Entry inhibitors, which inhibit the virus from entering into your cell and hijacking its DNA or RNA making machine. Reverse transcriptase inhibitors, these inhibit the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Integrase inhibitors, imagine my shock, they inhibit the integrase enzyme. And protease inhibitors. Okay, can we use entry inhibitors for coronavirus? We can try, of course, because same thing, the fire is going to enter. Can we use reverse transcriptase? No, why not? Because coronavirus does not have the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Why not? Because this enzyme is peculiar to the retroviridae only. Only the retroviruses have a reverse transcriptase inhibitors. That's why we call them retro, because they want to go back from an RNA back to DNA. This is called reverse transcription. That's why HIV is a retrovirus. Can we use an integrase inhibitors? Probably not, because integrase is peculiar to HIV. You will not find it in the coronavirus. Protease inhibitors? Maybe. But right now they are working on entry inhibitors for COVID-19. What are the medications used for influenza and can we use them for corona? Medications for influenza include uncoating inhibitors, fusion inhibitors, and release inhibitors. So fusion, they inhibit attachment and penetration. You can also call them entry inhibitors, uncoating inhibitors, and release inhibitors, such as the famous zonamivir and oseltamivir. Here is a pharmacology tip for you. When a drug ends in vir, it's usually antiviral. When a drug ends in navir, N-A-V-I-R, notice this is an A, this is an anti-HIV drug. If, however, the drug ends in evir with an I, this is anti-influenza, I for influenza. So look at this, zanam evir, oseltam evir. If you want to know more about the drugs that are used to treat HIV and influenza and herpes and hepatitis and antifungals, antibacterials, antiparasitic, etc., etc., all of the antibiotics in the freaking world, you can go to my website, medicosisperfectionist.com, and this course is on sale. 40 videos, baby. So what are the medications that are being tried right now for the coronavirus? They are working on a lot of stuff, including entry inhibitors, quinines and antibiotics. Quinines, why chloroquine? Because it's a zinc ionophore. Why antibiotics such as azithromycin? Let me tell you the story. You might object and say, oh, azithromycin is antibacterial and the coronavirus is a freaking virus. So why use an antibacterial for a virus? Again, let me tell you the story. Because azithromycin is used in COPD exacerbation, not necessarily with the infection. So even before the patient with COPD develop any infection, bacterial or viral, you can give them azithromycin depending on the situation. So this drug appears to have anti-inflammatory effects. That's why it's being tried right now for the coronavirus. Will it work? We will wait and see. Number nine, what's the difference between a quarantine and a cordon sanitel? Big difference indeed. So let's say that Mr. Purple is sick, but Mr. Green is healthy. Okay, quarantine is when you take Mr. Purple and quarantine him in a room, isolate him away from others so that he does not infect them. This is quarantine. Cordon sanitel is the opposite. When you get the healthy people and like when they do right now, everyone stay at home. Everybody, this is not a quarantine because most of the people are not sick. It's cordon sanitaire. You can use a combination of both. You can quarantine a patient and cordon sanitaire the public. These two terms are often used interchangeably, but I'd like to be accurate. So what's the difference between mortality rate and case fatality rate? First, I don't know what you mean by mortality rate. It's, it's very vague. Are you talking about the crude mortality rate? Oh yeah, what about the crude mortality rate or the crude death rate? This is, has nothing to do with the virus or, or stuff like that. It's the number of deaths from all causes during a period of time over mid-interval population. However, if you're talking about viruses, bacteria, infection, all of stuff, I think you mean the case fatality rate. These are number of deaths from a disease during a period of time, in this case COVID-19, 
over the total number of people who have COVID-19. So out of these people who have COVID-19, how many die? This is the case fatality rate. And of course, when the denominator increases more than the numerator, the ratio will go down. If you'd like 50 videos about cardiac pharmacology, check out my website and use the promo code CARDIOFARM50, only 10 left until the end of the month. I would like to provide the most value as possible, so please give me your feedback. Which videos do you want to see in the future about coronavirus? A question and answer like today's video or an update like the previous videos where I just keep yelling and making unfunny jokes. Please let me know. As you see, the previous two videos were demonetized, so please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. Follow me on all of these platforms. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course or my cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.